buddy. I warmed it up for you. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 reasons why Patrick Starr is the worst ever neighbor. But remember what Squidward said? We can't make any noise. Who said anything about noise? For this list, we'll be looking at the most notable examples of disrespectful conduct from SpongeBob and Squidward's starfish neighbor. Could you deal with having Patrick live next door to you? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Garden Thief. SpongeBob, you're fired. Both SpongeBob and Squidward would avoid plenty of trouble without Patrick's negative influence. After Mr. Krabs' nickel-pinching tendencies cost SpongeBob his job, the perpetually unemployed Patrick introduces him to the wonders of fun employment. The first stop on our tour of fun employment is a healthy breakfast with our good friend, Mr. Squidward. But it starts with an act of petty theft. Patrick brings SpongeBob over to Squidward's garden and shows him how to get free food in a rather deceptive way. How many times do I have to tell you? Keep this off the my yes! We know Squidward can be a little uptight, but he has every right to be angry at Patrick here. He probably wishes there was some starfish repellent that he could spray on his plants and vegetables. Number 9. Opening SpongeBob's Mail – Big Pink Loser We'll cut Patrick some slack for this, since the mail carrier delivering this package clearly wasn't paying attention when he pushed it into the starfish's yawning mouth. But Patrick looks at the box long enough that, if there is a mailing address on it, he should realize it's not for him. An award? I never got an award before! After opening it and discovering an award, he rushes over to SpongeBob's to share the good news. Of course, that's who the award actually belongs to. For outstanding achievement in achievement, SpongeBob SquarePants? SpongeBob SquarePants? That's a funny way to spell my name. At the end of that episode, Patrick gets a prize that's rightfully his, albeit for a dubious accomplishment. For doing absolutely nothing longer than anyone else, Patrick, this trophy's for you! <laughs> Number 8. Golfing in Squidward's House – A Friendly Game Golf is usually considered a sophisticated sport, but that's not the case when Patrick is playing it. In this episode, he and SpongeBob golf inside of SpongeBob's house, much to the annoyance of their neighbor. Listen now. I will not be woken from my nap again. And if I am, I'm gonna... Do this on the back nine? Just don't let it happen again! Or else. While they're both responsible for hitting balls through Squidward's window, Patrick ignores the sponge's suggestion to stop there. We're just gonna get out of the rough and back to the course! The game continues, moving into the octopus's house. Eventually, Squidward is screaming, dentureless, and his home is wrecked. <laughs> when it comes to being a good and considerate neighbor, Patrick is decidedly under par. Hey, Rematch next Saturday? As we'll discuss later, it's not the first time Squidward gets his house destroyed by his neighbors. Number 7. Body Odor – The Ballad of Filthy Muck Smelling bad isn't a morality issue, but it can make it hard to be around someone, especially if they live next to you. Patrick, when was the last time you took a bath? Oh, I can't think that far behind. While Patrick doesn't have the best hygiene, this episode puts his stench into a disgusting new context. It starts with him emitting visible green stink lines. His odor is so intense, it prompts a passerby to stuff worms into her nostrils and melts his rock. <laughs> How unsavory! <laughs> <laughs> Things get even worse when he goes to the Krusty Krab. Patrick embraces his odorous identity at first, and even SpongeBob briefly gets involved. But we later learn the starfish went home to shower. I went home and took a bath after I realized uh, I'd never be allowed in a Krusty Krab again. We're not sure where his bathtub is located, but for his neighbor's sake, we hope he uses it more than the episode implies. Number 6. Ruining Squidward's Sculpture – Squidward the Unfriendly Ghost this one is a bit of a team effort. SpongeBob throws a shell into Patrick's stomach, which he then launches right into Squidward's open window, hitting and ruining a sculpture the octopus made of himself. It's an accident, but Patrick's unawareness of the damage he's caused is pretty remarkable. Bonus points! 
Of course, he and SpongeBob think the sculpture is actually Squidward, leading to them ruining it further in an attempt to save him, and they get a hilarious experience with the not-so-supernatural, as the living Squidward convinces them he's a ghost. All ye must do is tend to my every whim and tickle my fancy on demand. Does that include... Quiet! Now, do as you're told, lest ye incur the wrath of Squidward! The moral of the story? Don't play around open windows and respect your neighbor's property. Sadly, though, this isn't the only example of Patrick ruining Squidward's artwork. Number 5. Stealing Squidward's Food – Patrick's Staycation Patrick is known for having a rather large appetite, but it's not quite clear where he gets his food budget from, considering he has no apparent source of income. It all depends on your budget. <laughs> the proof is that he doesn't have any money to afford a standard vacation, so SpongeBob persuades him to opt for a staycation instead. Take your vacation at home! No packing, no travel, just do whatever you want to do! But after taking issue with his friend's extensive hospitality, Patrick ventures over to a new resort, Squidward's house, where he is not welcomed. And he eats the food that most certainly is not for him. Not only that, he also treats Squidward like a waiter in his own home. Oh, uh, hey waiter, a uh, napkin please? We don't think he left a tip either. It's all wildly rude and disrespectful. With a neighbor like that, who needs enemies, right? Number 4. Very Loud – Various We have to admit that one of the funniest things about Patrick is his incredibly loud scream. Just do what I do when I have problems! SCREAM! But we're just watching him, not living near him, and if he's not awake and screaming, he's probably asleep and snoring. Either way, it's going to be a sound for sore ears. He's not alone in being a sound nuisance, however. At one point, his and SpongeBob's noisiness becomes so much for Squidward that he threatens to call the police on them. If there was ever a person slash starfish who needed to come with their own mute button, it's definitely Patrick. <laughs> Number 3. Flooding SpongeBob's House – Pet Sitter Pat Patrick doesn't know the meaning of the word responsibility, so he's the last person you'd want looking after your house or your pet. I am going to see my grandma for her birthday, and I'm trusting my best pal to watch carefully over Gary while I'm gone. You got it! He's safe with me! But SpongeBob trusts him with the task, and it results in the house being filled with water, turning it into an ocean within the ocean. Patrick, being Patrick, initially sleeps through much of this, and doesn't seem to recognize that it's his fault. We get that the starfish and Gary end up enjoying themselves, but can you imagine coming home to such a mess? We hope SpongeBob has good flood insurance to help deal with all this water damage. And no, we don't quite understand the logistics of an underwater house becoming flooded, but we do understand good neighbor etiquette, unlike Patrick. Oh, sheesh, Gary. Well, if you wanted another bath, why didn't you just ask? <laughs> Number 2. Terrible Pet Sitter – Pet Sitter Pat even without the house flooding, Patrick still does a terrible job of looking after Gary. It starts with him holding the schedule SpongeBob made wrong and getting rid of it as a result. <laughs> you need to work on your handwriting, SpongeBob. I don't need this anyway. Then he eats Gary's food. He does try to wash the snail, but this involves using a flamethrower. Check it out! Meanwhile, SpongeBob, away at his grandma's birthday celebration, becomes rightfully stressed imagining all the chaos his friend and neighbor could be causing. Uh, just checking in, everything okay over there? Who is this? Flooded house aside, things mostly end up okay, but SpongeBob probably should have just brought Gary with him. We hope he wasn't paying Patrick too much. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Vandalizing slash destroying Squidward's house – Various Depending on how you look at it, Squidward is either the unluckiest or luckiest person in Bikini Bottom. I should just walk away right now. His house regularly gets destroyed or otherwise ruined, and Patrick and SpongeBob are often involved, but by the very next episode, it's usually all better. Oftentimes, his neighbors aren't trying to wreck anything, but regardless of their intentions, they still end up turning Squidward's house to dust. Any second now. 
To play devil's advocate, we think the place might need an upgrade or two. After all, something's terribly wrong if your home can explode from bubbles alone. Still, while it's terribly funny for us, having Patrick and SpongeBob next door seems like a nightmare for our favorite grouchy octopus. I think he's jealous. How pathetic. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.